All right, we'll call the regular meeting of the Conservation Commission and Inland Wetlands Agency August 13, 2020 at 6 30. Uh, roll call. Greg Palmer here. Tom Murphy. Ned Dalton here. Joe Coletta. Here. George Tupons. Luigi Cavallo Jr. Here. Vacancy. <laughs> Pierre Moran. Here. Charles Belvo. Phil Mahler. We'll Looks see. like George Dupont's just dialed in. Yes, George is here. All right. We'll put uh, Peter Moran in place of uh, the vacancy. The vacancy. <clears throat> Do you have oh, thanks. George Dupont. Yep, George is here. Yep. There's George. Hello, everyone. Anybody from the public wishing to speak? Should we read this one? Uh, so I'm going to read the ground rules for the webinar. The secretary is. This is a web based virtual meeting, so we are operating under the following procedures. This session is being recorded both video and audio. Mark Massau, the land use administrator, and Mark Simmons, Michael Simmons, the town's IT director, will be the meeting administrators. A link to the video audio will be posted to the town's website. Most people attending this meeting will be muted. The commissioners and staff will not be muted. However, in order to minimize disruptive audio feedback, all participants should keep themselves on mute until ready to speak. Individuals will be unmuted at the time they are recognized to ask a question or make a presentation. Presentations may be made by applicants and their agents when appropriate and permitted by the commission. Other attendees will be permitted to speak only during the public hearing portion of the meeting. Commissioners and staff will generally be keeping video of themselves on throughout the meeting, unless they are attending via telephone only. Applicants and members of the public should feel free to leave their video on or off. However, they will be asked to turn on their video when speaking. A picture tells a thousand words and can be useful in conveying your meaning. If video is not available for you, you will not be precluded from speaking or providing public testimony. During public hearings, individuals desiring to speak will be asked to state their name and give their home address. We will read the public hearings rules at the start of the first public hearing of the meeting. Please use the chat feature or the raise your hand feature for the meeting administrators to know that you raised your hand to speak. If an applicant or agent needs to submit additional documents to the commission, which was not distributed in advance of the meeting with the rest of the materials, the application will be continued to the next meeting so that the new documents can be made available to the public. Members of the public may only speak during public hearing. If a member of the public speaks outside of a public hearing or creates an audio or video disruption, they may be manually ejected from the meeting upon recommendation of the meeting administrator or the chair. Uh, anybody from the public wishing to speak? Uh, acceptance of the minutes of the regular meeting, July 9th, 2020. Site walk, July 9th, 2020. Did everybody receive the minutes? Yes. Yes. Somebody want to make a motion on that? Make a motion to accept the minutes. Second? Second. Motion made and second. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Uh, new business. Application 2020-14 of the Town of Watertown Department of Public Works for the reconstruction of Portland Street, Oakville. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commission members. For the record, Paul Benedict, Watertown Town Engineer, for an application for the reconstruction of a portion of Portland Street in the Oakville section of Watertown off of uh, Buckingham Street. Uh, this is a substandard road that uh, 
we did some test pits and there's very little base and the road has been breaking up. It's of substandard width between 18 and 20 feet wide. We like to bring it up to at least a 24 foot section through this, uh, through this area, the 220 feet that we're going to uh, excavate the existing pavement and sub base down two feet below existing grade, put crushed stone and gravel to allow uh, water to flow between the two wetland areas to the north and south of Portland Street that are indicated on the plan uh, and uh, extend the dr an existing 12 inch, or remove an existing 12 inch corrugated metal pipe that uh, conveys water from north to south under the street with the new uh, perforated uh, plastic 12 inch pipe, same diameter. This would uh, require some filling on either side of the street, a total disturbance uh, of 7,120 square feet in the upland review area, and uh, four lineal feet in the water course for the extension of the, uh, the pipe to uh, make the road 24 foot wide. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Paul, oh, where the, uh, the 20, 220 feet of road begins where to where? Okay, maybe if I bring this closer. Actually, can you zoom in this map? Yeah, I guess I can see that. Oh. Yeah, you can you can put it there, but maybe uh, Frank can zoom in that map. You don't have to be seen. Oh, it doesn't. Work. Okay, that's the clock. Well, let me try to get it. Okay, then. Sorry about that. No. Oh, okay. Oh, see. Uh, it's approximately 250 feet from Buckingham westerly to the center of this area. It's the bottom of the hill between uh, Buckingham and Holton Street to the west here. So uh, it said this is an area that's only 18 to 20 feet wide. The pavement's breaking up. The stuff the pavement is virtually nothing. So we're uh, trying to improve this whole area and bring it up to at least a minimum 24 foot, which is our minimum yeah. road standard for uh, a certain It's basically the middle section of the road. Right, not the awesome. two ends. It's yeah. just, a, right. just the middle part. Right. Yeah. And there's just this 12 inch corrugated culvert running from north to south. We're just gonna replace that and make it 30 feet long so we can grade the 24 foot of the road down to uh, the match grade. So it basically only goes from Buckingham to the first street on the left, am I correct? Well, it's at the, like I said, in the middle of the block between Buckingham and Holton. Holton is just off the map to the left. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions on this? Uh, I just want to apologize. Sorry about that, guys. That was my dog. In the, oh. uh, it's uh, Charlie Bellavo. I just want, I just signed in. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. That's fine. <laughs> Moose, do you have any questions on this? No, the, the road is existing. They, they just removed the existing pavement and then put crashes on and gravel and repave it. Okay. The disturbance is already done when they built the road and they're not proposing any new right. disturbance other than two feet. You four, mean four feet, four feet, feet wider feet. the road on both sides and the ground. Well, total. The total, total. two feet probably yeah, on the side. Right. Yes, or maybe four feet on one side, it depends. All right, so we should probably have a vote that this is not a significant activity in the wetlands, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I uh, moved that application 2020-14 of Town of Water, Town Department of Public Work is not a significant activity. Second. Second. Motion made and second. Any question on the motion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Thanks, Paul. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can, second, Connecticut D permit application for the use of pesticides in Lake Winnemont. I thought we already had this and approved this, Musa. So that was for another lake. This is for Lake Winnemont this time. Every year they send it to all, like the Sylvan Lake, and Lake Winnemont, and Echo, Echo Lake. Lake. Yeah. But they, they've we already did that for two lakes, but this is new. This is for this. Lake well, they already applied this, right? It's already done, isn't it? They applied to DEP and they sent a copy to us to notify us that this is what they are doing. Right, but they actually it's a DEP that they approve or deny this application. Right, but they already sprayed the lake, didn't they? Uh, mm. I don't know. Probably the Park and Recreation Department they know. Okay. Because they notified them too. I guess this is make a motion to accept and file, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll make a motion that um, accept and file Connecticut DEP permit for application or use of pesticides for Lake Winnemark. Motion made a second. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Three, discussion on inland wetlands uh, meeting minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mark Matsud wanted to have a discussion with the Commission uh, to do the minutes uh, kind of shorter. Uh, probably he is uh, recommending to use the motion sheet as the meeting minutes. But because Mr. Matsud is not uh, participating in tonight's meeting, uh, please table this until next month. He will have a discussion with you. Okay. Somebody make a motion on that? So moved. Got a second? Second. Second. Motion is made and second. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any uh, abstention? Uh, old business. Uh, one, notice a violation issue to the owner of 30 Jericho Road, Watertown. Uh, the second one was notice a violation issue to Watertown Fire District concerning regu regulated activities conducted on the district property on Jet Farm Road, Watertown. Moose, any uh, update on these? No, Mr. Chairman. What's the, what's the hold up on Jericho Road? I think at the, at the last meeting you asked Mr. Basut to talk to the town attorney to see what they can do and uh, i don't know if he you know he had a chance to talk to paul jessel uh, please table this until next month and we will have a discussion on it to see what and that the same with the fire what is what's going on with the fire district both of them yes okay. want to make a motion joe make a motion to table um one north uh, for jericho road and two uh, watertown fire district Second. Motion made and second. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Uh, three, discussion on application review process by the agency. Same thing. Uh, you have to wait until Mr. Masood to join the meeting next month and then he will talk about it. Um, is there any update on that property that's on the corner of um, Route 6 and Fernhill Road, that package store? Because last I know, they were supposed to be taking it down, and I drove by today, and there's a above-ground pool that's up there. Yes, they are kind of like overusing that property. It is like, it is like a mixed use now. Uh, I went there a few times and took some pictures, and I recommended to Mr. Matsud to issue a cease and desist order because that's a zoning issue. And uh, I don't know if he did it so far or not. Again, uh, we can we can discuss at the next meeting when when Mr. Matsud is here. Um, when I had spoken to you last, you said that there were some wetlands issues there. The wetland issues. I went there. There was no activities there. And there is a brook going through that property in the back, and I went there. There was nothing going on. 
it is just the use of the the parking in that grass area that they put that trailer. Also, uh, recently I heard that they put a swimming pool, and also they are selling cars from there. Once in a while, you see a new car for sale in the front of the property. And uh, my office is aware of all these issues. Yeah, it's just it's been going on since before quarantine started. It's been going on since like February, and it's just it keeps getting worse and worse. I drive by it every day, and it drives me up a wall. Yeah, there's oh. a swing set there too. Yes, I agree with you. I'm not this like you. So we'll have an answer next meeting. Okay. Do so we have an answer on this next meeting? Uh, yes, hopefully we will have an answer for you next meeting. Uh, while we're discussing the application review process, as as we go forward, these violations is this going to be handled? Is there do we need to get the town council involved? How how is this normal? Why, why is it stalled? So violations? Are you talking about the Watson violations or zoning violations? But no, the violation on Jerry. Uh, this is uh, if we have a wetlands violation tomorrow. From doesn't make difference. Yeah. Who, I mean, the Jericho Road's been under two years. I mean, I don't, I'm not familiar with the process. Do we need to write a letter to the town manager and the attorney that you know? Why do we have a violation process that there's, there's nothing that can be done? I don't I don't understand why it goes on for year after year. If you remember, uh, Paul Johnson uh, kind of wrote to the commission and he mentioned that he is going to give us like a, a guideline that how to follow from now on. And it's still I'm waiting for that. At the last meeting you asked Mark to talk to Paul Jessel. I don't right. know if he talked to him or not. And next month when Mr. Masood is here, Mark, and then we will talk to him and see what happens. And I will also mention to him in the office. Can we get Paul Jessel to the meeting? If you want to invite him, of course. Uh, if you want, you can invite Mr. Uh, Jessel to come to the meeting. I wouldn't say that wouldn't be a bad idea. These things have been sitting for ages. Okay. Do you want me to send an email to yes. Paul well, Jessel and ask him to join the next meeting? Right. We need some type of paper trail here, other than verbal discussion. On, uh, I would like to see letters written to Mark Nassad and the town manager. We have copies of this. Is this what you do in zoning too? I don't know. I don't know the zoning part. What do you do about zoning? Nothing either? No, the zoning is different. That is not uh, under your jurisdiction. Uh, I know that, but I'm just want, I mean, when I'm talking about violations. So if you give a violation for a zoning issue, I don't understand how, how is it? He, he, the same way we said no sub violation, we give them some time to correct the situation. Yeah. If not, then they issue a, a cease and desist order. And if they don't do anything, then they go to court. Okay. Right. Does the Wetlands Commission have the authority to impose a per diem fine? Yes, you do. Well, so I think that might put so the, the problem is that the town council uh, they should appoint a hearing officer for citation. Like if I issue a citation, the, the person who received the citation has the right to appeal the decision to go to that hearing officer. But we don't have a hearing officer in hand. And it was raised this question to the council a few times, and I don't know what's going on. Can we just appoint our own if the town council is not taking action and let them approve it at their next meeting? No, that, that person has to be independent because you are the authority that uh, send the notice of violation and the person who is the hearing officer shouldn't be under your influence. They should be independent. This, this moves to them. You can CC the commission on the letters that are being written to Mark Mossad and the town manager or whoever are legal. So, because like I said, it, it, this goes on. It's been on there since like, as long as I can remember. And I, I mean, you're going to start a trend. Do you write a letter and bring it to me, or do you want me to write a letter on behalf of the commission? I, I can write a letter to Mark Mossad. Yes. Right. And the town manager. Oh. Very good. All right. 
Anything else? On, anybody else on the commission have anything on that to add? Uh, no, just, that's oh. item three also. You need a more sections table until next month. Right. I was just making sure nobody else had any questions about this. I just like to add my frustration that it seems like since I've been on this commission, absolutely nothing has gotten done. So it just it begs the question: like, what do we do here? We give people that want to follow the rules a hard time to make sure they do it right. And then right. the people that don't follow the rules get to do whatever they want. Right. I, I agree with you. So it's an I agree with you too. Okay. Yeah, it's an unfortunate circumstance, but if that member of the public decides that he's not going to cooperate, then I believe the only mechanism to get these corrections performed is a legal one. And if the town council and the town attorney aren't willing to take up the issue, it's kind of out of our hands. I don't think we have the, the authority to go over there and remove the material. How about putting a lien on a property or a per diem fine? Well, again, that's a legal issue and that has to be performed by the town attorney and the town council. Right. We don't have the power to do that. Correct. I I want want to make to town council I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I went by there about a month and a half. And I saw some material moved, and I thought maybe that was all set. But, but nobody knows anything about this. I mean, uh, Musa, you were not notified or anything? <laughs> it's talking about Jer oh. Jericho Road. Which, uh, Jericho. Jericho Road? Yes. Yeah, I talked to Paul just a few times, and he wrote uh, two letters to the property owner, and the property owner didn't do anything else. And the commissioner was expecting that maybe the town attorney take some legal action. And again, Mr. Masood was at the last meeting and he said he's going to talk to the town attorney. And well, I'm saying and that, that I would, want to I take would, the benefit of the doubt that maybe Mr. Masood already talked to him. If we I can wait until next week, hopefully we will have an answer for you. I was say there on Saturday and Sunday and nothing, is, it's not even close to finished. Oh, okay. Which one? Material that was there on top that has been removed, but that's not even that. That was something that he was going to add on top of what he already had. It's not mm -hmm. even close to being removed. What needs to be removed? It's also for your information, there are two uh, authorities here that they can enforce that. It's also on the town property. The park and recreation department also have some jurisdiction that they can tell him that remove this material from our property. But uh, Paul knows about both issues, the water issues and also uh, dumping those uh, fell on the town property and the park property. You know, so I think this goes to what Luigi just said, that, that you know, um, we need to have a way to enforce what we, we tell people. I mean, you know, so this has been on the books for two years. We have yeah. to have a way to be able to enforce it. That's what I think I, I repeated twice, and I'm going to say it again. We are waiting for the town attorney to tell us what procedure we should follow. And he said that he will give us something. I'm waiting for that. Should we, should we create our own procedure and have the town attorney approve it? Because he's never going to move his feet on this. It's just in the, in the statute. The statute is very clear about it, that what the and the EP has a like a has a procedure that it tells you what to do. But uh, Paul just said that he will make it like an easier for the commission to issue citation or whatever. And it's still I'm waiting for him to give us something. I will mention to him again that the commission is waiting for this and see what happens. Is there something that the town council could help us on too if we bring it up in their next meeting? I think the chairman is going to write a letter and that letter can be cc to the town council too. Anybody else have anything on this? Joe, can you make a motion to the table? Make a motion to the table. Second. Uh, motion made and second. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? All right. Aye. All opposed? 
any abstentions? Communications and bills. Uh, Harry Olson resignation letter. And I've got a copy. He's going to read it. This is from Harry Olson to the Rutlands to the chairman Rutlands and Eric from Complete. I don't know why that is, but yeah. um, dear chairman. I thank the commissioners and commission for having me as a member of Inland's Wetlands. I regret that I am resigning my position. My family life is demanding more of my time and I cannot commit the amount of time and attention that the commission and town deserve. I thank the commission for the knowledge and experience they have provided. Harry Olson, 406 Colonial Street, Oakville, Connecticut. And that is his phone number. All right. Uh, reports from officers and committees. Is there any R reports from staff? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Anybody from the public wishing to speak? There is nobody from the public that they want to speak. Nobody. Okay, we'll make a motion to adjourn at adjourn six, meeting. 656. The second. Okay. Motion Second. made. Second. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.